We're gonna do a full TA on Cardano and explain the trade setups and markets. Is that is that correct? Yeah, basically. I, I wouldn't. I'm not gonna go. I don't like calling any TA a full TA. We're just gonna have a bit of an analysis of how the market's looking and looking at some trade conditions. Really, just trying to build a little trade thesis. If we just saw, we just did Cadena, um, and the result of the Cadena analysis was I wouldn't get in a trade. So uh, <laughs> that was a super useful one for all you guys. Sorry if you didn't yeah, get a trade no, out no. of it. No, we're great. Man. We appreciate the uh, honesty in there. So I've already set up some my fibs, right? So here I did my fib in. Uh, this is Ada USD, and I did my long term. My most long term fib is the red one, basically following the same structure as I did before. My medium term fib is the purple one, and my near term fib is the yellow one. I've also got, of course, got Ada Bitcoin. And because Arda's got a few more markets than Cadena, I've also pulled up Arda Ethereum, just so we can build up a little bit more information. So let's have a quick look at Arda USD. I don't know how much people know about the Arda market. This is the market that I trade in. This is the market that my business is in. This is the one that I stare at all day, every day. So um, if you don't know what's been happening, we hit almost $3 peak during the bull run. Now we're trading at 44 cents. Uh, we've had Basel hard fork take place um on the 22nd and we did a bit better than ethereum did over the merge we actually did see a few days of green but it essentially hasn't really held or done much now what we've got here is actually a very similar shape to what we had in Cadena, right so let's draw on this shape that we see as a first step which is just the channel right we might see that this channel can sort of go out a little further but we've still got a pretty clear channel along here and they're looking a bit thick because I've increased the thickness on them, but that makes it just a little bit harder. But that's the rough idea of a channel that we're in. Same thing, we we'll call this a bear flag classically. That's not good news. And we've been bouncing off it. And we've been getting less powerful bounce each time we do. Now, what interests me about this market, if we just do the risk rewards right now. So we're obviously still playing inside this big range of the FIB in this long range FIB. So I wouldn't be that interested in thinking about trades outside of this long range FIB. This middle range FIB, as you can see, is also fairly wide. So we can even sneak in down, we can even sort of shorten our entire ranges to this middle range FIB, which is the purple. And then we don't really need to worry too much about um, the red anymore. So we've got this purple here and the red, and they all start at the same place, by the way, which is at the lowest point, which was at 40 cents. Now here, we can see that we've been struggling to get past, and we did tip this 40 cents, but we've basically got a fairly strong support range between sort of 42 half and 40, right? We've been getting bought up and bouncing off the 42 half quite firmly for a while, but each time again, the bounces have been getting smaller. Now, if we're gonna do a range, and I can tell you now, but we'll do it, we're gonna find that the probabilities are fairly even right now. If I wanted to go long on a very short term trade, I would maybe wanna ride it up to this point here. Let's call it 46 half. Oh, I got it here, 46 half. This would be the top of my long trade. I would be looking at getting in sort of anywhere between this zone, 40 to 42 half would be ideal range to be getting in on. So let's just call it in between and we're gonna just try and get in at around 41 half. It's gonna be my average price. So I'm gonna be buying in around there. Now, if I'm gonna be selling, I'm gonna to wanna to be selling somewhere in this range here, right? It, when we break, if we fade past this support, right? So let's say we wanna do a sell at around the same point. And for my rebuy, we wanna do a rebuy at around the same point. Look at this, this is a superfluously uninteresting one. And these are my reds. So right now, I would say that your probabilities are sitting at almost 50-50, right? So my, my buy sell for the local range isn't really giving me much of a, um, signal or up or down whatsoever. So I would say that if you're gonna be trading in the next few hours, in the next couple of days, um, you're gonna to wanna to be doing, you're not gonna to wanna to be doing any sort of trade in this range. You're gonna to wanna to be going down to the hour level and the 30 minute levels and the 15 minute levels to have a look at what's happening and trading shorter. But okay. this on a day on a daily basis isn't giving us much information, okay. right? If we go to Art of Bitcoin, and see, in the other one, in the in the Kadana, there was a really interesting scenario to look at. This has got much less interesting scenarios. We're looking at the chances of us breaking below this point here, right? And we can get a bit of information from our Arda Bitcoin on that because we have a very similar setup to what we saw in the Arda, in the um, Bitcoin Kadena. And that is this motion here coming up from 
some kind of low point, right? We had that same similar double bounce that we saw in Cadena took place in Cardano. So that means that this is the, thir- uh, let's go to the 13th of June. Here it is, 13th of June. The 13th of June was the day that uh, Bitcoin lost 8,000. And we can see that Cardano did a similar bounce up at the same time. Now these conditions are looking a little bit better than I would say for Cadena because this bounce actually took place from a higher point, which means that we've got support on the downside of this range through the Bitcoin market. And we can see our supports, I've already drawn them on. In this case, the red ones are gonna be the stronger supports. The purple ones will give us local ranges of support. So if ARDA were to drop against Bitcoin, we could see some support at the uh, 21, 21 half, or like 21 and a quarter, which means that our ARDA USD, our ARDA USD would see some support on this lower range as well. And that's essentially what this is representing. So this support line here um, on Cardano Bitcoin means that if Bitcoin goes down and Cardano goes down with Bitcoin at the same time, Cardano could get supported here against Bitcoin, which means Bitcoin could continue dropping, but Cardano through Bitcoin could remain at the same level because it has a support line here, Mm -hmm. which means that as Cardano is dropping down to that 42 half and then down to that 40 again, we could see support through the art of Bitcoin market at this level. And then again at this level, and then again at this level. Whereas in Cadena, it was just a flat drop. Mm -hmm. So what that tells me, again, the probabilities are 50-50, right? Like I'm not saying there's much more chance on one Mm -hmm. direction or the other at the moment for a local trade. Um, But what I'm saying is that we could expect to see bounces from this level, which means now I can try to adjust a long scenario, right? If I think we can see bounces from this level, I'm going to try and average in across this level. Let's go to the hour chart. I still want to try and pull a trade out. And this isn't necessarily the best way to trade. You shouldn't be trying to pull out a trade. (laughs) But just for show, I want to try and get something. So if we are able to get back into below this range, right? Because we've got the support from Bitcoin uh, on the Bitcoin chart, and we could sit around here while Bitcoin is dropping, we could have a technical bounce from 42 half back up to the local support range. Now we're gonna have to do a more local support to see it on the hourly chart. And let's do that. Fourth fib guys. So again, we wanna go from here, but we wanna go to here. Let's make this a very fluorescent color, like bright green. Ah, yeah, look, that bright green has already elucidated good information. And you could already see it by eye, right? But you can see that we're bouncing and we should lift it a little. You can see that this green here, this green line here is, and let's pull out my, this green line here is showing us quite a strong support level in this range, right? So if Bitcoin is dropping and Cardano is able to bounce, you could see a technical bounce from 42 back up to this level which means a fairly reasonable trade would be to try to go long and achieve a technical bounce based off of us holding this support on the Bitcoin, on the Cardano Bitcoin chart. And if we hold this support on the Cardano Bitcoin chart, you would expect to bounce from 42.6 to 44. That would be a pretty expected bounce. On the downside, that means we'd have to break this resistance and would want to go and would be going back down to the next resistance point below, which means we'd be breaking this level and be holding somewhere down there, which means at the moment, you'd be pretty comfortable going short in our current range, sort of the top half of this box, because we're at the top, we're literally at a support line right now, going short at about where we are now and trying to ride it down until it breaks the resistance of the art of Bitcoin. So we break this point here in the art of Bitcoin and ride it down to, oh, don't need another one. Let's say write it down to, you know, somewhere below there. We want to take a fade past. So even like 42, you know, or 41. Let's go down to 40. See if we can fade it past because we're assuming that this resistance is going to break and we're going down. Yeah. So our other trade would essentially tell us that we've got a lot more gain to make on the downside than we have gain to make off a technical bounce on the upside. So what does that tell me? That tells me that right now I'd rather be going short. That tells me that I'd like to buy up sort of within the range of this box. And if it breaks this line here, I'd be exiting. So this is my point of exit. This is my buy range or my sell range, sorry. I want to ride down until Bitcoin Ethereum hits this, which would be this point here. And that's where I'd sell out of half of what I bought or half of what I sold, I'd buy back. Mm -hmm. And then on the extension, where this keeps dropping, 
I'd be going for another 50% down here. Got you. Yep. That would be that would be sort of the direction that I'd be looking at for my trade right now. Now, we've got the RDF chart up as well, and RDF is another one that exists, and we can find confirmatory notes within the RDF. And I can really just look at it and see some confirmatory notes. First of all, art has gone up against F, right? Recently. Which means since art has gone up against F recently, if F drops, Arda has to drop harder for this to keep going down, yep. right? Because if they drop in step with each other, the they're actually going to stay at this point here, which is higher than this resistance here and this resistance here. So right now for this market to drop, sorry, we need Arda to drop faster than F. And that's the yeah. only scenario that that's going to be taking place in. All other scenarios, we either stay even. Ooh, that's now, crazy, man. what this tells me is this tells me that if ADA starts dropping because Bitcoin is dropping, F is likely to be dropping faster than ADA, which means this is likely, not more likely, but this is just as likely going to be going up here as this is going to be going down here. We're in the middle of the range, right? Here's the two levels, and then there's the bottom of that level, and this range is just open. We've got one support line that I can kind of see, but we've got this support line here. So we might go retest this line. We might go retest this line. But what I can say is more likely is that we've got to test this line before we get to this line. That's a, That has to happen. So because we've got to test another line before we go down, we've got another support here, it's much more likely that Ethereum moves faster than Arda. So since it's more likely that Ethereum is going to be moving faster than Arda, and Arda Bitcoin has got a support level here, I think that the probability of a technical bounce at this range here is fairly high because that technical bounce is going to be supported both through the Ethereum market and through the Arda Bitcoin market. So based on probabilities, what I might actually be looking to do right now would be to sell now, take it down to just this point here, and then try and ride the technical bounce halfway for half, full way for a whole one on extension, and then try and catch the bounce re back down. So I reckon the most likely shape we're gonna be getting will be here, down, up, and back. Just a second. I think this is probably what we're most likely gonna be looking at. Something like that. And that technical bounce is supported both by this resistance here, and it's supported by this support, sorry, that support there, and this support here, and this support here in Arda F. There we are. So that's my downside scenario for Cardano. Dude, you just changed my entire outlook on, on markets in one video. Like it, <laughs> I now see why, why Bitcoin affects the entire market. Because anything mm -hmm. that Bitcoin is paired with can be arbitraged between its mm -hmm. own mark, between that own assets markets. You could trade KDA mm -hmm. USDT, but arbitrage it with KDA BTC. So when BTC mm -hmm. makes a price movement, there's always an opportunity for a trade in, in some market in one way or another. That's exactly it, right? Exactly. Exactly. exactly it. And everything you taught me here, you could teach this to a bot, right? And you could have a bot trading based off of <laughs> certain parameters, right? You could have a bot that basically reads the chart just like you're reading it based off of if price movement or the for the spread between BTC and KDA or ADA, K, whatever, gets off, your bot could take trades and arbitrage that whole market, right? That's absolutely it, right? I'll take this back down to halfway. So these are the approximate trades that I'd be looking at right now for being in my vicinity to look at. Now that I've done the analysis of the market, mm -hmm. you can get a bot to pull up these numbers and essentially say you want to be loading in here for a short. If you wanted, you could also try and short it from here to here, but I'm actually mm -hmm. going from here. So this is sort of like my trade structure that I've got going at the moment. Now, what this means, and let me just say what this means in terms of a trading strategy, right? What this means in terms of a trading strategy is that you're looking at these levels to start looking at going short. So this is where I'm looking at entering shorts and exiting shorts. Mm -hmm. This sort of zone is where I'm looking at exiting longs. And then in the future, if this pattern setup is correct, then I'm looking to get short in this zone here once again. I don't yep. know if this is going to happen, but what I can say is that if this happens and that happens, I'm now ready. Yeah. And I'm going to confirm it once again through both of these. I'm not just going to go blindly and say, oh, look, that happened there. I want to make sure that these signals are still flashing at me from these markets. But now I've got my sort of downside scenario if it's Cardano built. And now you have to wait to see what the market actually does, right? And when you wait to see what the market actually does, if it starts to flash the signals that you were looking for for this scenario, and the signals for this scenario was this comes back down to this level here on Ethereum Bitcoin, and we're able to either hold this level or hold this level on Arda Ethereum, then my scenario here is in play. And that's what I'd be looking to do. 
And if you were in a feeling a bit of a gambling mood right now, you could go a short now to try and say that this is decent probability that we're going to go back to here and decent probability that we're going to go back to here. And through, and you can exhibit that opinion by going short now and trying to ride it somewhere between 42 half and 43 and half. And do you ever, is there ever too small of a move like 0.4442 to 4.2.6.3? Uh, like what is the percentage on that? Is, does it matter? No, like at the end of the day, it depends on what your spread is. And it depends how keen you are to scalp. But everything we're doing, we can do on a concept of a five second chart. Um, so you can do it down to the minute chart, right? And you can run the exact same analysis over a minute, five minute and 10 minute. And then you can try and scalp between a level here and a level there. Dude, that's crazy. Perfectly that's valid. The thing enough. is, is that the more you scalp, generally the more stressed of a human being you become. <laughs> I could see that, dude. I could totally see that. That's why I was looking at like, oh, can I build a bot to do this? <laughs> yeah, and you certainly can build bots to do this, right? Uh, and that's why if you're going to scalp, I highly recommend you build a bot because uh, we've all scalped. Um, it's great. It, it does. It can do really well and it can be super fun. But just keep it as a hobby. Don't make it a full time job for your own sanity. <laughs> you ain't kidding, man. <laughs> oh, I've, I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, there's my analysis of uh, there's my analysis of Cardano today. Um, Dude, great, I hope that's helpful for people. You know, I hope you get something out of that. I don't know how much you'll get out of that. And if you do have any questions, make sure you comment them. Any ideas that you might have, comment them. Um, I might also, I'm also going to have a bit of a discussion around some of these trading stuff in the Wi-Fi Discord yep. as well. And we've got a trading channel in Wi-Fi Discord and I'd love you guys to sort of come into the Wi-Fi Discord and ask me any questions that you have around any of these strategies. And please, you know, we're here to talk and I love discussing this stuff. I, as I said in another video earlier, I don't really actively day trade anymore, but this is where I came from. This is where my heart lies. And tell us a little bit about your background really quick. Where did you get started in trading? You used to work for I got hedge funds and a, I said you used to be a hedge fund trader, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 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 I traded uh, in uh, debt bonds. Okay. We've been talking about so many markets now, they're all over my head. So I uh, worked in the Australian bonds market, traded the Australian bonds market, and we did it through the futures exchange. We also did the American's bonds market and we did the European bond. And the bonds that we were essentially trading, uh, we were yield curve traders, and we were essentially trying to find gaps in interest rate between different countries. Okay. And we were doing relative interest rate plays between countries. And that's when you do uh, fixed versus interest uh, fixed versus variable interest rate swaps, and that's just an interest rate swap. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also do fixed for fixed interest or variable for variable interest. But And that essentially has got quite a few markets in play there, right? Because your relative value is twofold. First, you've got the yield curve and interest rates from the market, right? So as America increases its interest rates, the bond values go down, right? Because there's inverse correlation between interest rate and bonds price. But at the same time, all, you, all US bonds are priced in US dollar which means if I'm swapping Australian variable rate, even if I can get a better interest rate in the US, I am now swapping AUD for USD and I have to look after that currency exchange risk that comes alongside it. So that means you've got not only the bond market to worry about, but also the currency market to worry about. That's crazy, man. It's fun freaking stuff. wild, dude. <laughs> dude well, man, I mean, it's an honor, man. Dude, this is such a freaking... I don't know. My, my mind's like blown right now. I don't know what, what I want to think. I want to throw away all my old TA videos because you just changed everything for me, man. <laughs> just no, I'm, I hope you can take some of this stuff and actually and implement it in your trading, you know? So oh. make, look at the correlated markets before you run a trade and look at how the action in those correlated markets are impacting the core market that you're looking at. Through that concept of relative value, always keep in mind relative value, relative value, relative value. Yep. And the next video that we do, is uh, these, these just can keep coming. Yeah, that's what is, I was going to ask you. What do you want to do next? Where are we headed next? Yeah, um, is how do you use these relative value plays to build hedges and to build exits from bad positions? Oh, yeah, dude. Right? That's gone. Oh, I've got myself stuck in a really bad art of Bitcoin play that's gone really badly against me. Yeah. Can I somehow save myself or hedge my losses through art of Ethereum, art of USD, maybe Bitcoin Ethereum, because we can find a relative value there, Yeah. right? And then how do you put these trades and layer them on top of each other to build help hedging structures? And then how do you, then we can talk about how do you price these hedging structures? Dude, that's great, man. And that's a wrap, YouTube. 
Make sure you guys swing over to Twitter and check out VY Finance. Make sure you show Steve some love. When it comes to trading crypto, I personally have never met a better trader. I've never met somebody that understands trading markets better than Steve. He's an ex-hedge fund trader. This guy has a plethora of knowledge. And if you guys wanna learn more about trading, check out their trading channel and their Discord. Swing over there, show him some love, tell him I sent you, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.